Hey, look what I just brought home. This is the uh, Roballo 266 Cayman. It's a 2023. I literally just picked it up this morning. I got a little different interior color than what was stock. I just thought it looked cool. I'm going to shoot a little video on why I decided to change boats. If you watch my channel, you know I love my Tidewater 2500 Carolina Bay. I'll link a video to that at the very end here. Love that boat. But when I stepped on this boat, I just had to have it. I had an emotional response to it. And I just thought I'd shoot a quick video of why. So I've got exactly one hour on this boat. I haven't modified a thing. And I plan on doing some videos on my modifications and kind of walk through what I'm doing and why. Actually, I went to a boat show and I was looking at a completely different boat. I was looking for something with twin engines to take offshore. I ran out of this boat and I was like, no, this is the boat. So let me show you the first thing that blew my mind on this boat. What? Are you kidding me? Check that out. So the reason why this is important to me, you've got your spot lock on, you're fishing off the back. In my current boat, I have to face forward. My, I don't have any ability to even look backwards. In this boat, I've got rod holders on the back right now. I'm going to add some more, but I can sit back here comfortably and watch my rods. I mean, maybe other boat dealers do this. I don't know. But the guy dropped the seat on this and I was like, holy cow, I got to look at this thing a little bit more. Pretty incredible. I was like, that's an amazing functionality. It just... This is the second thing that blew my mind. Check this out. A fully functioning head. Keep in mind, I'm 6'1", and I fit in there totally fine. So with those two things, this boat has my complete interest. I'm all in. I want to check it all out. I'm going to go through every nook and cranny. My mind's already spinning. I'm going to show you the third thing, the little bonus item that blew me away. Look at that space. Look at how easy it is to get in there. Every pump's accessible, every switch. That's amazing. You know, I don't intend to get in there that often, but I know it's gonna happen. I know I'm gonna have a pump go out. I got man hands, I can easily get in there. That's gonna be a great workspace when I need it. Let's check this out. I can open this up without removing the cushions. This one's set up for rods. This one on the other side is set up as a fish box. This is fully insulated. Got a drain right here, and that's how that's set up. And look, I don't have to remove the cushion, don't have to remove the backrest. We're right back to lounging. All right, some things that I'd say are a little more standard, but I'm already super excited about this boat given the, the few things I've showed already. Check this out. Both sides have a live well that's split. Look at this, I got a divider here. Super comfortable seats back here. Two guys can sit here, no problem. If I just spin the camera around, I've got a cooler, which is a nice upgraded cooler. Boom. That's gonna be nice. 50 liter cooler right there under the seat, stays out of the way. Hey, while I'm at the cooler, one negative of that fold down seat that I showed you is that I only have two rod holders here. If you've seen my videos, you know, like most inshore guys, I got a lot of rods. I'll bring as many as I can. They had to take the two rod holders out that are normally right here because they would have interfered with the cooler. I might try to figure something out so look for a video on modifications there. I need to add rod holders. Right now I've got six. That would barely do it just for me. So um, I'm gonna find some, some ways. I'm gonna put some rod holders in here. Uh, maybe some verticals, maybe some 15 degrees. I don't know. But. That's one cool thing is I can bring this boat back in 20 hours and, and ask them to do those modifications. It's something we talked about before and um, I feel pretty comfortable that they can, uh, they can pop those in at a pretty reasonable price. So, you know, does somebody always have to be mowing your yard when you're shooting a video? Oh yeah, the grass grows, you gotta cut it, but bro. All right, let's go on the way back here. In the very far back, this boat's rocking a, a 425 Yamaha V8. It, uh, it sounds amazing. It moves this boat great. And then it's got, on both sides here, it's got the same thing. It's got storage for cast nets. You can make this a garbage if you wanted to. I'm gonna use a cast net. I always carried two nets with me and I was like, oh, that's amazing, I have two, Two spots where I can keep nets. I can't, I can't wait to use that. All right, another thing that I wasn't necessarily looking for, but I absolutely love in this boat, is this space. Check out this dance floor. Look at this. Look at how much room there is here. It's insane. I don't, if I'm fighting a tarpon and I'm running around the boat, big cobia, big tarpon, whatever, I can just walk right through. This is just amazing space. That's, look at that. Look at the room I got. 
This is a 26 foot boat, but it feels a lot bigger than that to me, to be honest. All right, let me, let me show you the bow. And one upgrade I always wanted my other boat, didn't do it, was I really wanted the Mencota Altera. I've heard some issues about reliability on the Altera. My dealer told me it would work great. I'm gonna take his word for it. He can fix it if it breaks. If I've got a bit of a bad back. I'm loving the opportunity here to have an Altera there. Right here, I've got another live well. And I think this is gonna be great when we're casting it off the bow here. We can just drop the bait right in here. We don't have to do a step down like in some boats where the, uh, the live well's in the other, other section. This is a 20 gallon well right here. One of the most enjoyable things about getting a brand new boat is figuring out where all your gear is gonna go. I plan to do that the rest of the day, but uh, this hatch right here is likely gonna store my life jackets and things like that. Nice big square, tons of room. And then right here, I've got some other storage. This is where my trolling motor batteries are. I got my trolling motor charger plug-ins right here. Um, tons of storage here. I'm not sure what I'm gonna put in there just yet, but that's gonna be the fun of today. A little quick something to point out. Every latch is just a pull. There's no twisting. I love that. Let's take, a, let's take a look at the brains of the boat here. I've got twin 12 inch Simrads. Uh, a lot of cool features. One thing I really love is that you can see the tide right there. Um, I obviously gotta get these set up and I gotta get my, my chip in there. I'll do a video on the chip that I'm gonna use in here. I use Florida Marine Tracks. I, I just think it's an amazing chip. I'm not sponsored by them. I absolutely love that product and I wanna show people how amazing it is. Something pretty cool, I have a onboard charger right here. Boom. So this boat is equipped with NEMA 2000. I can come in here and go to my Yamaha and it can give me all the data right here. And another thing I have, which this was a splurge for me, is radar. A little glare situation here, but this boat's get equipped with uh, Simrad radar. There's the dome up here. So the reason I wanted to get radar on this boat is I really want to improve my capability or my, my ability to fish at night and just feel more comfortable doing that. Radar will help. Um, and also this boat's got some amazing spreader lights. I've got lights here that are blue or red, depending on what you want, what conditions you're in. And I've got spreader lights on each side. Look at this as a side spreader. I've got forward spreaders, I also have rear spreader lights. The last thing I wanna mention about what I love about this boat is it came with a trailer. I'm super stoked that I have a trailer. This will give me the option now to, to get out to the East Coast, get to the Keys, um, do some fishing and explore some areas that I've always wanted to do. And I just didn't have the capability without the trailer. Also maintenance. So I'm super excited I got a trailer. It was kind of a thing that I, I lucked into, honestly. Robalo just automatically puts a trailer in the invoice and um, the reduction of taking it off just didn't, didn't make sense math wise. It, it, the trailer's worth about three times what the credit was. So I was like, I'll take the trailer if I want to, I'll just sell it myself. And I'm not doing that. I'm really looking forward to the capabilities of having that trailer. All right, no boat's perfect. I know that. A couple things that I'm concerned about. The number one issue is engine noise. This 425 sounds amazing, but it is loud. Not, I didn't upgrade the sound. I just thought the cost was crazy. Um, so I, I've got a clarion system in here. Uh, I'm a fisherman. I just, I don't believe in just blaring your radio, but sometimes when you're coming, especially offshore, no one's around you. I kind of like to turn it up. When I'm coming in, I might want a little bit more power in my speakers, but you know, we'll see if, if I need to do that. I figured that's something I could definitely do later on and it wouldn't cost me that much more. Two other concerns I'll mention. Um, the ulterior reliability, which I covered a little bit. I'm, I'm willing to deal with that just given the convenience, but this one for sure I think is gonna bother me. And that is, this is fairly heavy and I, I love the access, but there's my battery switch right there. But I don't know if every morning when I come out super early in the morning and ripping up this, this is a pretty heavy, heavy thing. I got a feeling I'll get used to that and that won't be an issue, but I'm not crazy with where they put the battery switch on this boat. I'm concerned about too, although this might be a blessing in disguise, I'm not sure yet, is that I've got a full windshield here. I've got a vented roof up here. I can hydraulically open that up. I can hydraulically open that up. But I'm a little bit worried about airflow. See, I do have fans that I can connect up here. And so I think that'll probably be my solution. I've got my switches here. I've got fresh water, raw water. I've got my live wells here, trim tabs here. More live well, live well. Um, so this is kind of my fishing side right here. Obviously horns up here, you always want that to be your key spot. Over here, I've got my bilge pumps, nav lights, 
courtesy lights. This light, this boat has ridiculous lights stocked. The speakers are lit up. There's great lighting in this. Can't wait to take this boat out at night. I, as I mentioned, I got map lights here. I got red and blue. Spreader lights, another auxiliary. I've got underwater lights on this boat and my jack plates right here. And over here, I've got my trim tabs. Right here I've got, obviously I have my power poles. So just put, I put the standard 10 foot power poles on this boat. I got a really cool glove box right here. Nice place for the phone, never get wet, won't rattle around, won't go flying. Uh, this is my command center here. I like that this is out of the way. I don't need to see this all the time. This is something I, when I need it, I want to go look for it. I don't want to take up space in my dashboard. I love where they put this. Very minor, but really cool in my opinion. Dedicated spot for my fire extinguisher. My other boat, I kept my fire extinguisher in the cabin. Likely that's where the fire is going to be. That's where all the batteries are. I've never liked that, but I didn't have a place for it. So that makes perfect sense to me. I don't necessarily want to see it all the time, but you know what? I know exactly where it is, and if I ever need it, likely I'm going to spray it in here where my batteries are. And on this side, I've got some really convenient tackle storage. I'm a fisherman. I'm going to use that. So I went over what I was super excited about, what I was concerned about. Two things that surprised me was I got this super long antenna. I, I really don't think I need this long antenna. I'm gonna research that, why they put such a long antenna on. This is gonna get in the way of me casting. I'm gonna be banging into this thing constantly. I'm not the most athletic guy in the world. Uh, and another thing is, I don't know why they have such a long anchor light on here. Yeah, granted, I got a dome up here, but I, I don't think it needs to be that long. And I've got a bridge. I don't think the camera's gonna pick it up. I've got a bridge down there that I gotta deal with. When I went through it at high tide today, I had about 18 inches and this would have hit it had I not had it down. So those are two things that surprised me just a little bit. Hope you liked this first video of my Rebalo 266 Cayman. I'm going to shoot more videos on this boat and kind of keep a video history of what I'm doing with it, both from a fishing standpoint, but also just from a boat ownership standpoint, modifications, repairs. My first impression, I'm just blown away. Check out the fun bringing this boat down the canal. We had a good time. All right, I just took possession of this Rebalo 266 Cayman 2023. Be pretty stoked coming down the canal for the first time. And if you watch my channel, you know that uh, we've got a little tradition. Tradition is canal beers, but on a special occasion, we got something else. We got a nice boat. We got a bottle of champagne. Yeah. Now keep in well, mind, I, I did ask Michelle for the cheapest champagne we had. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let's pop this. Victory dance. Woohoo! Oh, Woo there's a pop. Oh, there's a party in every bottle. So you can see now, these are special see? canal life prototype cups. This Merch is obviously prototype. We're testing. Not a champagne cup, but it'll hold the it'll hold the liquid. Nice nose bouquet. Nice nose. Since I robbed a bank to buy this boat, I went with a bigger cup. Don't tell the bank. <laughs> That's how you drink champagne in the canal, Jeff. Canal life. Cheers. Oh, let's live this life. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna hit your lips. What's it is your lips? So good. We're not stopping there. Fancy boat. Fancy, can't just, fancy can't boat. just have champagne. No, this is a fishing boat. This is a 99% fishing boat, Joe. I don't want you to think I've gone soft on you. Well, with all the room, you could be soft and fish. So to go with our champagne on a fancy deal like this. High class chocolates. High class. We got to set the French press. Down off of uh, Rum Runner's Point. I don't know what that point's mm -hmm. called exactly, but you mean one nice. bite. It's a two bite. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a single bite. Oh, yeah. You want to enjoy that? French press at Cape Harbor. Hmm. Yeah, that'll work. That doesn't stink. We got a whole box of these things. Oh. Uh, I'm enjoying today. Yeah, today's a good day. It's gonna be a good day. All right. If you like the content on this video, check out my channel. Jeff and I are fishing all the time out here in Southwest Florida. If you want to see all the modifications that I do on this boat, I just showed it to you as it is stocked basically from the dealer. I plan on having some of the best days of my life on this boat. Cheers, buddy. Thanks for coming out today and helping me get her back home. So we made it through the bridge, no yep. problem. <laughs> little, little pucker there for a second. We're almost to high tide, still had a foot and a half. So we're all clear for lunch. So I'm a professional engineer and I measure things for a living. And I knew I could get through there, yeah. but it was still scary. <laughs> All right, now I'm out.